So I'm here today with Jim Applegate, who's the Executive Director of the Illinois Board of Higher Education. Hey Jim, how are hey, you? I'm fine, thanks. So um, I'm curious about what you see as some of the biggest um, education policy opportunities and challenges that Illinois faces in 2017. Okay. Uh, well, you know, when I first arrived, we did an analysis. Illinois set out a 10-year plan back in 2009 for higher ed uh, and uh, set certain goals. Uh, one of those was the 60 by 2025, 60% of the workforce having a high-quality college credential by 2025. So they did that, and then when I came in 2014, that was about halfway through the 10-year period. So we put together, cobbled together some funds and did a kind of an update on where we were. And out of that came some good news. We had increased the education level of our state uh, at a pretty good clip. Uh, but some other findings were more disturbing, and those are what set the policy priorities that the Illinois Board of Higher Education adopted uh, the first year I was there. One thing, because we're so we like to think we're data based, uh, I like to say that you know you everybody's got a right to their opinion, but if you don't have any data to back up your opinion, I don't have to listen. Uh, so uh, can I borrow that? <laughs> yes, you can. Um, so anyway, the, what what the data showed us was one uh, that. Uh, among our workforce uh, population, gaps for African American and Hispanic students, uh, people were growing in terms of college degrees. And for our low income people, we weren't making much progress, a little bit, but nothing like the national average. So closing gaps, priority one. Priority two was uh, Illinois in that five year period had become, uh, college had become less affordable faster for middle and low income families uh, than all, all but about six or seven other states in the union. So affordability, priority two. The third finding was we were far below the national average in adult learner, adult participation in college. And we knew we had this massive market of adults, 22% of the Illinois workforce has some college and no degree. They actually went to college and didn't finish. Uh, and then another quarter or more only have a high school diploma. So those were the three real policy priorities, bending the curve back on affordability, closing gaps for underserved student groups uh, in the population, and uh, getting more adults back to college. One area that I know you've been focusing on quite a bit is the college to career transition. Mm -hmm. And um, so tell us a little bit about what um, Illinois' emphasis in this area has been. I mean, I, I've been around long enough in higher ed that I remember when it was all about college access. Mm -hmm. And we thought if we got people to college in the door, mission accomplished. And then we looked at completion data and we said, oops, no, we've got to make college completion the, the holy grail. Since I've arrived, we've been able to work in collaboration with the, uh, uh, the Illinois Department of Employment Security, which holds all the workforce data, and connect uh, the higher ed data to the workforce data. And now we're experimenting with some reporting tools where we are, sh going, to, we are going to be able, we've done some p pilot reports where we're able to show, for example, what happened to the 2010 college graduates in Illinois by institution and by major. Mm -hmm. So we could, from 2010 to 2015, salary, sector employment, job stability, all that things. We're still in the beta phase of all it's that. wonderful though. But you've got, what we're trying to do then is to provide that, Illinois is a big state, uh, enormous regional differences in workforce needs as well as uh, other uh, demographics and characteristics. So we have created, uh, we're working to create regional collaborations where we are trying to take that data down to the regional level and then let, I'm a big fan of what has come to be known in the field as collaboration for collective impact, where you bring multi-sector partners together to solve a problem. Mm -hmm. And so in these regions, we've got employers, we've got higher ed leaders, K-12 leaders, mayors of cities, community foundation leaders, coming together and what we're trying to do is help them to identify uh, what the current and projected uh, workforce needs are, where the jobs are and are going to be, and then working with their private, public, two and four year colleges in the region. And I would say a lot of that is focused on the adult learner because we are focusing on obviously advising and trying to get traditional students on that pathway. But you've got a lot of people, from what I just said, living in those regions who don't have college credentials of any sort and they're living there, they own a home there probably already, they have kids, they're, and, and they're working at something probably. If you bring them back and you get them the credential they need to fill that next better job, you're really improving the region. I mean, they're going to get it and, and their ROI for the region is going to be greater. So I'm curious about 
other things that you've learned through your sustained emphasis on college to career transitions that would be um, that would be insightful for some of your colleagues in other states? Well, I mean, again, we're early in that. I think this will, one of the things that we know is important is that we want to use this data. Uh, one of my best friends in one of the best data organizations in the country often says, use data to improve, not demean. And so we really want to primarily focus initially this data on what's happening to graduates as a feedback loop to our, to our colleges. So they can look and see where they're doing well and where they're not doing so well. What was the, uh, the way that um, higher ed institutions were, um, were uh, presented with the idea that they should share their data so that they should, um, so that you could connect it to the workforce? Data. Well, as far as sharing the data, uh, we have something called the Illinois Longitudinal Data System. Okay. And so it's really not a choice okay. to share the data. Okay. Uh, in, in fact, are, the, are they reticent to? Uh, no, there has been no. I no. have a sense, okay. very, I mean, not among the publics, uh, occasionally among a private college okay. here or there. Uh, but we get the private and the public data. Uh -huh. And uh, the way it's set up in Illinois is I mentioned the MAP program, the big $400 million need based aid program. If you accept state map money, mm -hmm. you must provide your data. Got it. So if you want to give up your money, you don't have to provide your data. That's a good incentive. So, uh, so no, we and, and I would say for the for the public universities that we work with very closely, uh, there's not been resistance to this at all. I, I th again, I think how we use it and use it as we want to make sure we use it as a continuous improvement and not a demeaning method. And we've got to look at that whole continuum for our students, particularly for those who are coming to us low-income first-generation students of color, undereducated adults, for whom this will be life-changing. Jim, thank you so much sure. for sharing oh, with me. Thank I you. Appreciate, appreciate the opportunity.